This spiritual reading is taken from the Eucharist and Christian Perfection by Blessed Amard. And the first chapter of Book 1 is on the service of God. And he says, we must serve God, for we are his creatures and his property. Although God gives us our liberty, he does not intend to abandon his rights over us. We belong to him. We are his property. If we try to take ourselves away from him by disobedience, which would be a real theft of God's possessions, a denial of his rights, we are declaring war on God, then God must reaffirm his rights over his property by meeting out punishments to us. Were he to allow our revolt to go unpunished, he would no longer be God. God does not do anything without a purpose. When he gave us a soul, a heart, and a will, he expected us to be able to know him, to love, and to serve him. How greatly this aim of his honor, how greatly this aim of his honors us. How greatly this aim of his honors us. That God should believe us capable of loving him, and that he should accept our love attests to the magnitude of Christian grace and is the most palpable proof of his infinite condescension. For an inferior cannot pretend to love one who is placed far above him. Love presupposes or creates equality. It binds both sides. God cannot admit to being our equal except by means of his condescension toward us. He really desires, he wishes to be loved by us, and from there on he binds us to himself and himself to us. Yes, it is certain, he does not fear going to the very limit of that path of mercy and in his incarnation, that is, his coming into the world as a person, as a divine person, by sending his word to be our brother, his word meaning Jesus Christ, he, as far as possible, becomes our equal. But at the same time that he abases himself to our level, through his word, he raises us up to himself. Through the humanity of the word, and the Word became flesh. In this way, He loves us in an infinite degree, and it is given to us to love Him also without limit. Loving Him, we must necessarily serve Him. For we cannot love Him without knowing Him, and that knowledge produces the necessity of serving Him. For by it we recognize that He is God, our Lord and Master. And at the same time, it puts us in our place as creatures who owe him everything that we have and all that we are. Thus, the necessity of serving God comes from the knowledge of what he is and from the grace he accords us to love him, just as a result <clears throat> flows from its natural cause. But how can we serve God worthily as is his due? And what motives should activate us in order to serve him well? And that's the conclusion of the first meditation on the service of God. I will continue with these but first I'm going to get through this by the end of May and then move forward from there. See you on the next one.